Hey artists, I'm Tira. I'm an eco artisan in Wichita, Kansas, and today's video is Paint With Me Simple Paintings Editions. Our subjects are a cactus, a mushroom, and a holiday tree. Let's get going! Art supplies we'll be using today include a watercolor kit. This watercolor kit is available on the website and is linked in the description below. You will need three 4x6 watercolor sheets, the Oxide Palette Dot Card, round watercolor brushes. I'm using size 4 and 8. You also need a pencil, eraser, and a Sharpie Thin Pen, which is optional. You also need a plate to mix the watercolors and a watercolor container. Up first, our art subject is a cactus. When sketching your subject, for me personally, I find it's much easier to start with a large basic shape. This cactus has a ton of round shapes and I use the pencil to lightly sketch it onto the paper. As I move to various arms of the cactus, I take note to which arms will be in front of the cactus and which will show the arms kind of like slightly smaller behind the cactus. I try to fill in the shapes of my page to keep it as balanced as possible. Once I have all of the arms on my cactus that kind of make it feel balanced, I use the Factus Black 18 eraser to erase all of the lines that I no longer need to see in my painting. Side note, I do love this eraser for watercolor paper. I feel it works really, really well, and it is not sponsored. I am just absolutely in love with this brand. After getting my pencil lines fine-tuned, I grab my brushes and soak them in water. Let them sit for a few minutes to fully be encompassed by the wet liquid. Brushes usually have pockets in the center of the brush hairs, and if you only wet the brush very quickly, it won't have time to entirely wet the hairs in the center of the brush. Wet the viridian and yellow iron oxide on your dot cards. Then, add the paints together to your palette until you find a good mix of that yellow-green. After finding a good mix, wet your brush again and paint in a semi-smooth, semi-chaotic fashion. We're not going for structure here, we're going for kind of like a loose based stroke. Try to paint each shape individually instead of the full cactus. Allow for dead space. Without paint for lighting, try to think about where you want the shading to happen for your shades. When you've almost fully covered your first layer, we're going to set it aside to dry. Once your first layer is completely dry, go ahead and grab the color on your palette, add a little bit of water, and start to paint a second layer. Try not to paint it exactly the same way as your first layer on the paper. Here I am mapping out where I want the shade to be. I did layer a fairly strong shade, so I'm actually going to go back and even out just a little bit more so it moves with the shape in a better fashion. Shading is slightly more intuitive than it looks. I'm not specifically thinking of a light source, but maybe you want to. It's good to have a reference of cactus if you are wanting to try a more realistic approach. However, with this exercise of simple paintings, I am looking to make something that I can feel proud of by taking a little bit of that time and practicing my skills. As I do more detailed work, I realize the rest of the painting is starting to dry, which means I could add a third layer and use the partial wet, partial dry page to create beautiful shades of yellow green. Once I finished that last layer, I liked where it was so I let it dry fully. After drying, I grab the Sharpie Thin Pen and I start to outline the cactus pieces, making sure to be careful and give, my give myself enough time to slowly move and keep the flow even from the pen. It's really easy to apply too much or too little pressure when adding your outline to a painting. And you can't complete a cactus without the spindles. I wanted my spindles to have more of a heart-shaped feel to the cactus. A cactus with a little love. I think it's super cute. If you're looking to give these simple watercolor paintings to your friends or loved ones, then the hearts just add a little bit of texture that's just very extra loving. As you move further up the arms, try to keep a similar facing direction to the arms that you're working with. The smaller the arms and the further away the main body means that the spindles should be smaller and closer together. In this case, I decided to dot it for ease. Up 
all of the hearts and dots have been completed. Now we have to finish our painting. Do you know what to do with the finished painting? Make sure you sign it. Most artists will sign the bottom right hand of the page, but this is your painting. Do what you want. Congrats, you did it. You finished your first painting of this video. I'm really proud of you. The support from this video comes from my Patreons. Thank you so much to Eva, Tom, Greg, Peru, Courtney, and Cassidy. By joining Vintage Watercolors Patreon, you get to choose between three tiers. We've got the growing artist, the art collector, and the art connoisseur, each with their own perks, including access to digital coloring pages, worksheets, the Discord community, ad-free videos, a shout out on Twitch, and so much more. Thank you again to our patrons for supporting this eco-friendly art shop. I look forward to growing our community and seeing what 2024 will bring us as I plan to go as a full-time artist, please join the Patreon community today. The link is in the description. On to our next subject, the holiday tree. This symbol painting will use all four watercolors and will not use a pencil or a pen to design it. First, wet your brush efficiently and paint with Viridian. We'll be creating multiple triangle-like shapes stemming from the top and creating two round sides outwards. Leave space in between the branches in order to allow room for the bobbles later. After placing the first layer, run over the wet paint with more water from your brush to allow the watercolor to bleed out, creating a fuller effect between the branches and also to not overwhelm the page with too much color. Still make sure to have space in between branches for the ornaments. When the first layer is completely dry, wet the red iron, the yellow iron, and the ultramarine paints with little dabs of water. Pick up the red iron watercolor and start filling in the round circles. Leave small spaces of air on the edges of your spheres. When dry, this will add a simple lighting effect to the bobbles, making them look like they're reflecting light. Now we'll do the same with the yellow iron oxide watercolor. Space it evenly from the red iron oxide watercolor bobbles, being careful to leave spaces in the bobbles, whether one or two. This really sells the reflectiveness. Lastly, same with the ultramarine watercolor paint. Space it evenly from the red iron oxide and the yellow iron oxide watercolor paints on the tree. Here, you can also add additional decorations. For me personally though, this is enough. When all your decorations have been added, now is a good time to add another layer of Viridian. Now, try not to follow the exact branches as the previous ones that you've laid down. Also be careful not to add a very strong layer. This layer should also be light as well, so pick up enough water to transfer that. If it is too dark, you can use a towel to pick up any excess. Once the second layer of the branches is added, pick up water on your brush and stipple the Viridian paint on the branches to fill out the rest of the space. There, your holiday tree is completed. These are great practice to make for this season's holiday cards. When was the last time you mailed letters? If you don't remember, I think it's been too long. A quick pause before the next and last painting. The events happening in Gaza right now are atrocious. The worst of humanity is being seen, and I want to make it very clear that I don't support the bombing of innocent civilians. I'm currently participating in a Teltify campaign for Doctors Without Borders. This is from their About page directly. As an independent and impartial human humanitarian organization, Doctors Without Borders delivers emergency medical care where the need for their expertise are the greatest, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, or politics. Doctors Without Borders are working wherever life-saving medical care is urgently needed. This fundraiser and dedication enabled them to respond immediately to care for patients who need it most. In Afghanistan, three 6.3 magnitude earthquakes have struck the western part of the country within eight days starting on October 7th. After the first earthquake, Doctors Without Borders team set up six tents outside the Herat Regional Hospital to help accommodate the influx of patients and added four more in the wake of October 11th aftershock. They are assisting with triage for emergency cases and managing care of stabilized patients in the emergency tents. In Gaza, civilians are caught in the crossfire, cut off from food, clean water, shelter, and health care. And as the hundreds of thousands of people are forced to flee, they are seeing a chronic humanitarian crisis turn into a catastrophe. Doctors Without Borders continues to bear witness to the situation in Gaza and advocate for humanitarian access to be restored. Doctors Without Borders teams are responding to multiple emergencies around the world right now. They continue to be guided by one goal, to provide emergency humanitarian medical care. This information can be found in the link in the description or scan the QR code to donate to the campaign to provide humanitarian aid. 
Currently, the Twitch community for Vintage Watercolors has raised $200, but we are looking to do more. There are live incentive rewards for donating during the stream, including two minute and five minute quick paintings of your choice. Please donate today if this is within your means to do so. Continuing on to our last painting, the last subject is a mushroom. Similar with the cactus, I find it best to sketch the big shape first and then add the details. I created a hemisphere with an imperfect shape and more of a rounded edge. After the main shape has been formed, I then move in to make globs. These will represent the little white spots that form on top of the mushroom. Then we can form the skirt of the mushroom and the legs. I love the imperfectness of mushrooms because the less smooth it looks, the more mushroom-like it actually appears. Once the outline is designed, I then use an eraser to erase the lines very, very lightly. I want it to be as light as possible so it doesn't show entirely through. For this painting, I want the red and yellow to blend, creating a gradient effect, and to do that, we must wet the page first, but be careful not to have too much water, especially where you don't want to have paint where the white spots are. After thoroughly wetting the page, let's add the red iron oxide and saturate the empty spaces with color. While red is still wet, wet your brush again, pick up the yellow iron oxide, still being careful not to paint over your white spots, and drag the yellow across the bottom part of the mushroom to let it bleed into the red. Don't overwork it or you might have muddy colors instead of vibrant colors. Let this dry. After fully drying, we can add another layer of red iron oxide and yellow iron oxide. This time there is no need to fully add coverage, creating a texture on a mushroom. To paint the white stem, we will actually be playing a little bit on color theory here. To paint white, it actually doesn't make sense for us to use white, and the reason why is similar to looking at a blank page and someone telling you that there's an invisible drawing. You can do two things. You can paint the background and leave the white the same color as the page, or, as I'm doing here, you can grab a really watered down blue. Leave the heavier portions of the blue in with the shades, clean your brush, and use that water to drag the blue to other parts of the stem. Don't overthink it, just get it on. I want this layer to be uneven so as it dries it appears more white with the shadows. Once the painting is dry, I grab the Sharpie Thin Pen and begin to outline the various shapes of the mushroom. I'm making sure to keep it as round and as smooth as possible, taking my time to really allow for expressing the odd shapes on the mushroom head. I then go over the skirt with, of the mushroom, adding pleats and carefully outlining the mushroom head. Take your time, there is no rush. Yay, you did it! You finished your third painting! Sign it, date it, and ship it! Thank you so much for watching this YouTube video. Please like and subscribe to this channel for more tutorials. Follow me on Twitch for live content and support me on Patreon to get access to all of the goodies. Have a great day and happy painting!